Inicet was conducted in May 2024. Let us see some questions and these questions are based on the recall which was done by some students. So this was uh, one question on hormones. Actually in Inicet 2024 there were a lot of questions from endocrinology. One of which was this where they gave the histological section of the adrenal gland and asked which hormones are released by each layer. So outside layer is the zona glomerulosa then we have zona fasciculata and then we have the internal one there is zona reticularis and this forms the cortical region of the adrenal gland and this is the medullary region so different hormones are released from each of these layers uh, cortex different and medulla different and uh, the question was asked that uh, each layer which of uh, the hormones it is being secreted so we should remember here GFR where G is the glomerulosa, fasciculata and reticulosa and this is from outside to inside of the adrenal gland and the hormones released are fundamentally majorly the G releases only mineralocorticoids, fasciculata releases glucocorticoids as well as androgens and reticulosa also releases uh, glucocorticoids and androgens but remember when we talk about mostly which hormone is released and fasciculata we write as it is mostly the glucocorticoids and the reticularis as mostly the androgens so this you should remember but uh, also remember that fasciculata and reticularis actually release both because the question can be asked this way as well sometime later and medulla part of the adrenal gland releases epinephrine and norepinephrine next question was on mechanism of action of the hormones that is basically the second messenger system and this was the question and uh, actually if uh, this is the membrane and here there is a g protein uh, coupled receptor this g protein coupled receptor acts via various mechanisms one is by adenyl cyclase activation and other one is by phospholipase C activation and for this i have made a detailed video separately you can have a look on that but let us see that what is the correct answer to this mcq first obviously that whenever the ligand binds to its receptor it leads to the this uh, g protein coupled receptor has three subunits g alpha g beta and g gamma so this g alpha separates from this uh, receptor and goes and activates another enzyme which is present nearby and this enzyme is the adenyl cyclase so obviously with this we are excluding out uh, these two options we have either a and c now this adenyl cyclase enzyme what it does it breaks down atp to canp which in turn activates the protein kinase a okay so the correct answer in this becomes the c okay so this sequence we should remember and uh, there is another pathway as well that is by activation of the phospholipase c and what this phospholipase c does is that uh, on the membrane there is a lipid phosphatidyl inositol phosphate 2 so this phospholipase c acts on this pip2 lipid and it breaks down it into inositol triphosphate and diacylglycerol and then there is further action so if this particular pathway is asked there are chances that future this pathway can also be asked so you should know the sequence of this as well next question was on labeling the diagram which was given and again it was from endocrinology and I like this question very much because it is a unique question as far as labeling the diagram is considered because here you see the hormone which is being released from the pituitary it is acting on the liver and this in case of growth hormone is known as hypothalamic pituitary liver axis so this whole term is used hypothalamic pituitary liver axis so obviously if a hormone is acting on the liver here so this 3 is definitely growth hormone okay and then it acts on the liver and releases IGF okay so this IGF is responsible for other actions of the growth hormone and you see there is direct action of the growth hormone here as well which is acting on the adipose tissue so growth hormone has direct actions as well as indirect actions so here third is the growth hormone and fourth is IGF so with this let us see whether any option is fitting yes we have third here as growth hormone and fourth is IGF and one and two are being released from the hypothalamus actually for growth hormone we have both excitatory as well as inhibitory influence from the hypothalamus that means 
we have a hormone which promotes the release of growth hormone from pituitary and we have another hormone somatostatin which inhibits the release of growth hormone from pituitary so for this question this is the correct answer again next question was of endocrinology and again it's the same topic as well actually it is growth topic and see this topic has been recently added in competency curriculum as well that is how growth is occurring in the fetal life and then postnatal life so which hormone does not play a significant growth in utero here so insulin and growth hormone are very important hormones for the growth in utero then growth hormone which is like obviously we will think that is not the correct answer here that it hardly has any role to play in growth in fetal life however it is igf which is important for growth in fetal life and in fact there are both igf1 and igf2 again this was a very easy question i think because the this is taught uh, many times uh, during whole mbbs and very direct question this is which is associated with element lesions then here answer is atrophy and fasciculations these are associated with the element lesions and we should know what are the other features of element lesions as well in element lesions we have hypotonia okay decrease in tone then these are uh, deep tendon reflexes actually decrease and there is absence of the babinski sign babinski sign is present in upper motor neuron lesion then the muscle groups which are involved that is also important because only the segment which is affected that particular muscle groups are involved in element lesions fine so i think this question was on a very easy side then this question is now repeatedly being asked and uh, it is uh, very important to understand that uh, what are the critical features which will help you identify a particular stage of sleep so if we see everything all together then you may get totally confused right so suppose any diagram is given i don't know which diagram was given and what was the correct answer to this question because only when i see the diagram i will be able to tell but see when you are thinking of rem sleep you should be very clear that emg will be silent so here in this diagram you see it's a straight line and eog you see there is periodic movements is occurring okay this is periodic eye movements which are being shown so this actually is known as polysomnography the recording of eeg electroencephalography and electromyography these are taken together to identify the stage of sleep so just by looking at emg you see there is hypotonia and that is the critical feature of rem sleep then another critical feature which helps you identify the sleep is in nrem2 and nrem2 is having these sleep spindles and k complexes so this if you see in eeg then it is a clear sign of nrem2 stage so by these features you can easily identify rem and nrem2 now comes that how to identify the other features so you see that if the question is being asked in this case maybe in future they can make it more difficult and you have to identify other phases of sleep or the wake state as well so i think that if they give that they will give some comparative eeg and tell you that okay this particular eeg or eeg is this particular stage or they will give a scale so that you can identify the wave of the eeg so as you can see eeg here it is high frequency wave the number of waves which are occurring in particular time is very large right so many waves are occurring in a small time on the other hand in if you see in this deep sleep stage 3rd or 4th the number of waves have considerably decreased so this is what this is delta waves of eeg and here in wake state we basically when the person is alert we see beta waves so that is one thing i think which you should learn that how to identify the waves of the eeg then finally one thing also i want to show here that here even though the stages are a stage 1 stage 2 and some eog we are seeing first of all it is not periodic and second of all what happens that there is some activity in the prefrontal cortex and not in the eye eye movement is not occurring but that activity is wrongly recorded by eog now this was another question which i think was pretty easy only thing you have to go step by step thinking that uh, in response to increased blood pressure sa node is influenced by so 
you should know that whenever there is increased blood pressure there is activation of the baroreflex right and this baroreflex will in turn what it will cause it will decrease the sympathetic activity and it is going to increase the parasympathetic activity and increased parasympathetic activity means that there will be acetylcholine which will be acting on the sa node okay so that is the correct answer here and uh, decrease in sympathetic activity clearly means that these three are not the correct answers again a simple but indirect question now coming to this question which i found quite interesting that which is correct about depolarization of the cardiac muscle now here what we see obviously this chetani is the incorrect answer right and rest all three are associated with cardiac muscle yes cardiac muscle has a large refractory period yes cardiac muscle shows len tension relationship and uh, all or none law is also there because it is a syncytium now i don't know whether this question is correct or not because what i got to know that uh, this question here it can be which is incorrect about depolarization of cardiac muscle yes if that is there then definitely b is the answer but now i will tell you my point of view which might be totally abstract and totally wrong but i think like that that if this is the question which is correct about depolarization depolarization when we talk it is a electrical phenomena okay which is correct about depolarization of cardiac muscle so cardiac muscle has a action potential something like this right and you see depolarization is this phase and this phase is repolarization phase and it is due to repolarization phase that we are getting the large refractory period okay then this len tension relationship i think it is the property of the muscle that is it is the property of the mechanical activity and it is not the property of electrical activity so just in case if i think that this question is correct then according to me the only option which is left is all or none law again it i might sound very weird here that how come it is occurring but my thought process is that if this is the correct language which is correct about depolarization of cardiac muscle then len tension relationship is a mechanical property tetany again is a mechanical property obviously which is not occurring in cardiac muscle large refractory period occurs because of the plateau in the repolarization phase of the cardiac muscle okay so that's why i am telling all or none law however if the question is which is incorrect then obviously tetany is the correct answer moving on to another question that erythropoietin is secreted by well it's a straight forward simple question only but some people may miss it that uh, they may uh, choose only kidney but uh, nowadays we teach regularly also that erythropoietin is secreted by both liver and kidney okay and kidney it is around 85 to 90% of the secretion of erythropoietin but liver also there is secretion of erythropoietin so the obvious answer here is a b so a is the correct answer the next question is about a decrease in gfr is associated with a very fundamental question and i think very commonly asked also so whenever you are solving such kind of question you should always think about the forces which are working on the gfr if you are only solving questions and not developing systematic thinking that which is a push force which is a pull force then some more other time you will get these question wrong so we don't have to depend on chance or luck that okay i have seen this question and this is the answer no because these options may keep changing so suppose if this is the glomerulus and this is the bowman's capsule remember think about glomerular hydrostatic pressure which is a push force right and glomerular oncotic pressure which is a pull force then we have bowman's capsule hydrostatic pressure which is again a push force from the bowman's capsule to merge the glomerulus and then we have oncotic pressure which is a pull force so in this now everything we have to think in terms of these forces when there is increased renal blood flow there will be increased in glomerular hydrostatic pressure which is a push force so that is going to increase gfr right then increased glomerular hydrostatic pressure so again increased rbf increased glomerular hydrostatic pressure direct it is going to increase gfr then decreased bowman's 
oncotic pressure so if this oncotic pressure is going to decrease that means the pull is going to decrease and if the pull towards the bowman's capsule is going to decrease that is going to decrease the gfr okay so yes this is the correct answer for the sake of completion let's solve the last option as well decreased glomerular oncotic pressure so if oncotic pressure glomerular oncotic pressure decreases then this pull towards the glomerulus is going to decrease so that means the push force hydrostatic pressure is going to overpower okay so that means this again is going to increase gfr so this is the correct answer but remember for solving such kind of questions you have to develop a systematic thinking otherwise these questions and these options will keep changing you cannot take a guess with such kind of question so if you have any other questions on these or any other difficult questions you find in previous year question papers do let me know put as comments and i will try to solve them thanks for watching the video if you liked it do press the like button share the video with others and don't forget to subscribe to the channel physiology open thank you